Hi, um, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, welcome, thank you for attending our webinar. We're happy to have you here with us today. My name is Marcia Cheney. I'm Director of Marketing at Gluco. With me, Sam Winbrandt, Director of Product Management at Gluco, and we'll be hosting today. Just some housekeeping before we get started. All participants will be on mute, but there will be a Q&A at the end, so please submit your questions along the way. Secondly, you can listen to this webinar again by visiting our website at gluco.com. So um, let's get started. As you learned in the invite for this webinar, Gluco will soon offer more ways to view diabetes data. We've updated the web to include a new dashboard, streamlined navigation, new graphs and data views, and an updated PDF function. This webinar will provide an overview of the new charts and graphs and reports available in the next release of the Gluco web application that will launch in June. If you're currently a Diasend customer, these reports will be available to you if you transition to Gluco. So let's get started. I'll turn it over to Sam for a demonstration. Hi, everyone. This is Sam Winbrandt here. I'm Director of Product Management at Gluco. And I've been working on this project for the last year or so to redesign the front end of our web application and offer new charts and graphs to all of our customers. So today we're going to start by logging in as a healthcare professional. Uh, hold on just a minute. Uh, we're hearing that some of you can't see the screen, so give us just a minute. Okay, continuing on. All right, sorry about that. So um, I just logged into Gluco as a healthcare professional, and we're going to look at a specific patient today who has type 1 diabetes who's on both a, a pump and a CGM. And so I'll start today by showing the new interactive web graphs, and at the end, we'll take a look at the updated PDF report. So we've just clicked on a patient here, Megan Arnold, and the first thing you'll notice is we've updated the navigation of the application and streamlined it. So now we've got uh, these five main tabs at the top, summary, graph, logbook, insights, and devices. We've consolidated all of our graphs into the graph section now. Um, as some of you uh, Gluco users today might know, they're in a few different places throughout the application. So we've consolidated a lot of the views uh, into a single framework. You'll also notice that uh, the patient profile information up at the top here will follow you across all of the pages. Uh, so you can have quick access to uh, update any, anything in the patient's profile uh, that you'd like. Um, all the reports I'm going to show today are available for both healthcare providers and for patients. They see the same thing when they uh, log into Gluco. <clears throat> so the summary page, previously called the dashboard, has been uh, redesigned now with the goal of clearly presenting a consolidated view of, of the most important diabetes metrics so that you do not have to dig through numerous charts and graphs for insights. Everything you need to see uh, is all right here. We've added insulin to the dashboard, uh, diet and fitness data, and we've got some summary glucose data as well here. So we're focusing on percent in range as a key metric up the top. And here you can see that Megan, over this two-week period of time, has 87% of her readings in range, 2% low, and 11% high. We're then uh, displaying some key glucose metrics, such as average, median, standard deviation, percent time of CGM active, and then the highest and lowest values in those time periods. Scrolling down further, we then break down this glucose data into various sections, so you can focus on um, in this example, times of the day um, that uh, the patient may be in or out of range. So this is interactive, so you can hover over these bars to get a sense of what the target range is and how many, uh, what percentage of readings are below and above the target range. And then again, we have um, summary metrics beneath each of these time periods. So this is this is the bi-hourly view here, where we've sliced up all the data in into two-hour buckets. Uh, in the two-week time period that we're looking at. 
You can also toggle between time of day and day of week to get a better sense of uh, where problem areas uh, may occur. <clears throat> Moving further down, uh, we've got the history list right here on the side. This shows all of the discrete events. Um, and you can scroll uh, through time to see all of the, the raw data here. And then at the bottom, we've got the trend section. So the trend section shows um, patterns that Fuko has picked up in this person's data. So in this example, uh, this person has a steady rate of high sensor readings um, over the two weeks uh, prior to this time period. And you can click to expand more uh, and, and read more about this specific pattern. Changing the time period to a 30-day view now gives us the, um, the pattern section here, which shows the highs and lows throughout the selected 30-day uh, time period. We're also commenting on what the best days might be. So it looks like for this person, the best days were Thursdays. So we can talk to Megan then about what she does on, on Thursdays and, and why that may be her best day. Going back up to the top here, we've got the insulin metrics on the right. This shows a breakdown of basal and bolus um, over the time period. And then you have some key metrics around the total daily dose, uh, the percentage of overrides, and the number of boluses per day. And as I mentioned previously, we're also showing some, some summary data about diet and, and fitness. Uh, Megan happens to have a, a Fitbit connected to her, her account, so all of, all of her Fitbit data is, is displayed here in Glucose. In addition, um, Megan also has BG readings uh, from a meter in her account, so um, we can toggle between CGM and BG uh, Glucose readings and see a breakdown than of the, the BG data uh, instead of the CGM data. Now we're going to dive into uh, some of the graphs. <clears throat> so the first graph here is the overview. So this shows glucose data, carbs, insulin, and exercise data over a selected time period in a longitudinal format. And the purpose of this view is to really correlate these different data types to glucose and see how someone's uh, glucose may be affected by their carb, insulin, or, or exercise. And the, this view is interactive as well, so you can hover over specific time periods and see summary metrics for, for that specific day. So in this hover state, we can see the bol bolus and basal breakdown for this day as well as some key glucose data, um, total carbs, and the amount of exercise for the day. We're also able to toggle, again, between BG and CGM reading. So if, if a patient, for example, were not on a CGM, uh, you would see their, their BG data here, just like it's displayed here. If we, we can zoom out to a longer time period, um, if you wanted to look at 90 days, for example, the CGM data here, though, can get uh, pretty crazy. So we've added this concept of percentiles. So the percentiles filter lets you add percentiles to the data. And these percentiles are the, the 10th to 90th and 25th to, to 75th percentile. And this allows you to see uh, smoother trends in, in the data and um, really easily see how uh, the glucose values fluctuate over time. In this format, we're also um, showing summary data by the week. So here we can see the average insulin for, for example, this full week and the number of carbs per day, as well as summary glucose and, and exercise data. So let's jump back to a two-week period. So the other great thing about this view is that when you isolate a specific day where you may want more details, you can click on that day and that will take you right into the 24-hour view. So this is showing one day's worth of glucose data 
and you can hover over any of the data elements to to get more detail. Um, so we are showing glucose up at the top, which is both your uh, CGM and BG data. And we've got carb values here in the middle. And below that, we have boluses. And the boluses, um, you can hover over a bolus to see all of the details about that bolus. For example, this is a, a combo bolus. So there was some portion delivered immediately and some po portion over an extended period of time. Beneath that, we have um, we have the basal uh, basal rate. So again, you can hover over this to see what the actual basal rate was at this uh, at this time period. So it looks like 0.7 units started at 4 a.m. And in addition to all of this, you can scroll left and right um, through, throughout the graph um, to see how, for example, the previous day may have affected the next day. We provide the ability to quickly get back to the one week view that we were looking at previously. <clears throat> and then to, at the bottom of this view, we also have summary glucose metrics. And, and these metrics, again, um, represent data from the, the full time period that's selected. Now I'll, I'll fast forward to uh, the overlay, the next view we have. So <clears throat> we've um, updated the uh, overlay section of, of the application. For CGM users, we now show both um, the spaghetti and the UGP graph. So the spaghetti graph will show you all of the raw CGM tracings over the last week, but you can change again change the Time selection, if you want to look at two weeks, for example. The, all of the days are colored so that all of the Mondays are the same color, all of the Tuesdays are the same color, et cetera. And what's great about this is that um, you can filter out specific days of the week that you want to isolate. So let's say we just wanted to look at Saturdays and Sundays. We can select Saturdays and Sunday from uh, from this top picker up here, and just those days will be displayed. So this allows you to isolate um, weekends, for example, and, and see how the glucose may, may be different on the weekend versus the weekdays. We've also added AGP to the platform. So AGP is the ambulatory glucose profile, and this is a great view. We're very excited to have this in Gluco. And, um, Again, you are able to filter on specific days of the week. So you can look at an AGP for just Saturdays and Sundays. And we've also added this concept of the lowest and highest. So you can toggle on, if you'd like, um, uh, dotted lines to show the lowest and, and highest values in, in this time period. So the AGP is really great in showing patterns um, across a, a period of time. So you can see in a typical day when someone might go high or low or, or be right there in range. And at the bottom, we're focusing on key CGM metrics. Um, so we've got average and standard deviation and coefficient of variation on the left. And then you'll see we've got the, um, the serious low threshold set to 54 and the serious high threshold to 250. And the target range as well as the low and high values can be customized per patient. So you can change these values to, to better meet um, the patient's needs, um, and the data will be re reflected. We've also, uh, we're showing percent time of CGM active here, so you can see how, um, how frequently the, the patient may be wearing their, their CGM. So if only BG readings were um, present, and let's say the, the patient didn't have a CGM and you wanted to look at a BG version of the overlay, we can toggle here to BG. And notice that the two graphs update to scatter and box, box plot. So this is, is a view of the standard um, modal day scatter plot. So again, all the days in the two-week period of time uh, plotted on top of each other. And you can hover over values to see um, hover over BG reading to see what the value is, as well as click on the specific value. And that will bring up the history list 
to show you what may have happened before and after that value occurred. So in this case, we see a bolus of 0.65 units at 7.30 p.m. with the BG reading of 2.69 at 9.1 p.m. There's also the box plot version. So this, um, we've applied some, uh, some uh, metrics to each hour so you can see kind of uh, smoother uh, correlations in the data. Next, we have the calendar view. So this is a brand new view to Gluco. And this is, um, what this is showing is all of your data in a calendar format. Um, this helps spot trends across specific days of the week. And so here we're showing both CGM and BG data here, as well as, um, as carb data, boluses, uh, basils, and then specific pump events as well. So here we can see um, a set or a site change occurred as well as a reservoir refill. So this is a, a great view for seeing how frequently a patient may change their set or site. And you can click on a specific day, and again, that will take you right into that day's view. So if you want to start with a more macro view with the calendar and then drill into a specific day to see more details about what went on that day, um, that, is, that is doable. We have this quick link up here then to get back to the calendar view that we were just, just looking at. So in addition to um, the graphs, we still have the logbook in the Gluco application. Um, so this hasn't changed in this release, but we're actually planning to make some updates to this in, in the following release later this year. So uh, look, look forward to that. <clears throat> the insights section of the application, this is showing um, pump specific insights. So this tab is only available if you've uploaded a pump. And here we're isolating specific events like set and site changes. And this graph is, is showing how frequently someone may change their, um, their site and what their corresponding glucose uh, average and, and uh, variation is in each, of the, uh, in each of the time periods. Scrolling down, we can see the before and after for each of the site changes. And again, we have this drill down concept where if you want to Look at a specific site change, you can click in, and it will take you to that day in the 24-hour view. We then have also the devices uh, page. So this shows all of the devices that have been uploaded to this specific account. And then you also have the um, device settings beneath that. So you can see what the basal rates are, uh, what the various bolus settings are as well. So I'd also like to add that all of these graphs work great for both type 1 and, and type 2 uh, patients. So if you're on just a meter, um, you can just uh, see all of this data um, in, the, in the BG format, and it all fits into this, uh, this same framework. So the next thing that we've updated is the, the PDF wizard. So on each of the pages here on the top right, you'll see the option to create a PDF report. And from here, you can select the specific report that, uh, that you want to be part of your PDF. So we've got the summary here, and you've got two options for summary. You can either print the BG or, or the CGM version or both. The logbook overview, the daily overview, and this will print um, each day in detail. The overlay, again, you have the CGM or the BG version, um, calendar, devices, and insights. Uh, you can choose if you want the report to be in black and white or color, and you can also type in specific comments that would show up on the, on the summary view here. So if you want to leave a comment, um, you can type in text here. So I've already created a PDF ahead of time, so let's take a look at that. So this is a PDF version of, of the views, and 
Here you can see um, the same data that was available in the interactive um, web is, is here in the, in the PDF. So we have, again, the glucose data, um, both summary data and then by hourly time of day and day of week with a focus on uh, percent and range here. We've also got the insulin data up at the right, um, the, the diet and fitness data as well. And then the comments that you put in would show up here. Scrolling down, this is what the new overview looks like. So the overview shows uh, both CGM and DG readings uh, for a two-week time period. And you can also see the basal and bolus breakdown for each day, as well as the total amount of insulin, the total carbs, and the total steps per day. So all this data, two weeks, um, is here in the overview uh, graph. And you've got your, your key summary data at the bottom. <clears throat> Next is the new CGM overlay. So here we've printed both the AGP and spaghetti on one, one graph. We know that um, a lot of healthcare providers prefer one over the other. So um, we're giving you both. So uh, the AGP visualization is at the bottom with the spaghetti up at the top. And then we also have those key glucose um, CGM metrics down at the bottom. <clears throat> the calendar view fits uh, very nicely on, on one page. So here again is the data um, laid out in calendar format. So you can see all of the uh, raw BG data, the carb values, uh, the individual boluses, and also the basal rates and the suspends. That's what this uh, red bar is here. And then the rest of the views um, within the PDF are what you get today. So you have the logbook. So you've got the two-page logbook here, which shows uh, one day on each on each row and there's seven days on a page and then you have your um your insights so both the the set and site change uh graph and and table beneath that as well as the temp basal decrease and suspend so here we pulled out all of the temp basal decreases and suspend and you can see um, what the rate was set to what the corresponding glucose was then before, during, and after the temporary basal. Then going down further, we have the daily overview. So this, um, this shows each day in detail. Um, if you'd like this to be part of the PDF, um, then you can select the daily overview and, and you'll get the, C, the raw CGM tracing for each day, as well as the glucose values, all of the bolus details, and, and the basal rate as well. And then lastly, we have the, the devices section. And here we're showing, again, all of the devices that have been uploaded to the account. The, um, and then the various uh, pump settings, so the, the basal rates and the, the bolus settings here. <clears throat> so jumping back to the web, um, I hope you've enjoyed the new charts and graphs. I think that about um, wraps up what we were going to present. I'm going to turn it back over to Marcia now. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for your attention. So um, our goal at Glucose is to provide you with actionable insights quickly and effectively. And um, in this release, we give you more ways than ever to view diabetes data and to understand how these factors impact your blood glucose levels. So um, now we will uh, take questions. Uh, give us one minute. So the first question is, will all historical data still be available? Yeah, so um, with this change, we've just redesigned the, um, the graphs and charts, but all the data that is in Gluco today continues to be available available to you. Okay. Next question. Uh, what are the differences between overview and calendar? 
Yeah, so um, as you can see here, the overview um, really allows you to view longitudinal uh, diabetes data to make it easier uh, to spot longer term trends in the data. So we, for example, can look at a 90 day view of, um, of BG or CGM data in one graph. And what the calendar does is the calendar shows you um, days of the week corresponding to a calendar, and so it lets you spot specific um, specific trends across uh, similar days of, of the week. And also, you from here can isolate a day and, and drill into that day to view the, the 24 hour details. Next question. Have you made any changes to how the mobile application depicts data? Um, good question. So all the changes here are for the, the web application. Um, we do have some, uh, some changes coming out for the mobile application as well, um, but they're separate of what I just showed you, um, showed you today. Next question, where does the fitness data come from? Yeah, so um, I think we support uh, seven different um, health and, and fitness apps. So um, you can go to our website to get the list, but um, it's through, just off the top of my head, Fitbit, RunKeeper, uh, Strava, uh, Withings, now Nokia. Um, we're adding Apple Health in this release as well, so now you can connect your um, your your health app to Gluco, and we'll import all of your your fitness data through that. There's a few others that that um, that are available as well, but I believe there's seven seven or so sources. Will I have to re-log into the system to see the new reports and graphs? Um, no. So um, the reports and graphs will be available uh, to you. You may actually you may have to log in, um, but if you've saved your your username and password, that that will continue to to function as it does today. Can I see CGM calibrations in the graph? Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad that was asked. That was um, that was something that was just introduced in this new version. So in, in the old Gluco, we were not displaying CGM calibrations, uh, but in this new version, we are. So um, if you look at the this graph here, for example, you can see um, at the top of, uh, of January 7th, you have this diamond here. And that diamond represents a CGM calibration. So those are now represented throughout the application as diamonds. Um, and so we're, we're very excited to introduce the calibrations uh, into Google. Next question. Um, hi, I beta tested the new data entry system and I'm impressed with the new graph. Is there a target date in June? So the target date in June for release is the second week of June at this point. Uh, next question. What if my patient has a CGM and a meter, or I have a CG? How can I see both data types? Yeah, so um, as I covered, the we have this toggle up at the top of each of the graphs that lets you choose between CGM and, and uh, BG readings. That's up here, and this will um, be present whenever you have both devices uploaded to the account. and um, works on uh, all the different views. Uh, you can also, when creating a report, as I showed, for certain views where we don't um, show both data types on the same graph, you can choose which one of those you want to print. So for the summary, for example, you can choose to have the CGM or uh, the BG summary. So next question, can you view exercise data on the calendar view? 
Yeah, so exercise data um, is not available on the calendar view. Um, however, if you do want to get exercise for a specific day, you can click into that day, and if there is exercise data present, then it would show you here on the in on the uh, this bottom portion of the graph. Um, it would show the exercise values here. Next question. Is it possible to create custom ranges? Yeah, so um, we do have the option for custom ranges here. So um, the default uh, selections are listed here, and then you can see at the bottom we have custom range. So this lets you choose from uh, a calendar the amount of data you want to see. So we can look at, um, let's say we want to look at the uh, 1st to the 21st. Uh, we can apply that. And now the views have been updated to show uh, this custom range. So next question, are there any plans to add additional insights for data events such as mealtime or illness? Yeah, I'm glad that was asked. So the insights section today focuses on these uh, three primary events, um, set site change, temp basal decrease, and temp basal increases. Um, in a release later this year, we're going to be adding bullish overrides to this. So you'll be able to um, isolate and get some key uh, summary metrics around all of the bullish overrides that occurred. We also do plan um, later this year to do uh, an insight view around uh, uh, mealtime data as well. Um, no plans for, for illness at this time. Next question, are there any plans to add favorites to PDF Wizard? Yeah, so um, also in a, re in a release later this year, um, we will be adding the option for PDF uh, favorites. So what this will look like is in the uh, in the top right of the PDF wizard, you'll be able to choose from um, a dropdown, and um, the the selection will be for a favorite profile that your clinic may have created. So that what that will do is it will um, allow you to basically select a set of reports that you like to view. And then every, every time you go and create a PDF, you can choose um, the, the favorite options that will populate this window so that you can view those, those sets of reports without having to manually uh, select them each time you go to, to print. So going back to the summary page, where do we find time and range metrics? Yeah, um, time and range met metrics are actually scattered throughout the application. So on most of the graphs, you'll see at the bottom, we have time and range that represents the time period that you've selected. Um, so here, it's a one week view, and you can see 83% uh, uh, of readings are in target range. Um, then you've got for each day, you can hover over a day here and, and see the, um, the percentage range. But actually, on, on the summary as well, you know, most of the focus is on um, percentage range. So here, um, all these all these green, uh, orange, and, and red bars, this represents uh, time and range. So next question, can you show us where to see average BG levels before meals? Yeah, so that is available if, um, let's jump to the, the BG readings tag here. So uh, if the, um, the user happens to be tagging the, the readings on their meter as before and after meal, um, 
what you can do here is when the BG option is selected, you'll see this uh, show readings by meal option. And this lets you look at the both before uh, and after meal tagged readings. So in this case, I think um, it looks like this person is just tagging their, their before meal readings. Um, you also have the option in the CGM data to look at the data by time of day. So um, these time ranges here are customizable per patient. So there's four different time blocks that you can configure, and this will show uh, the, the readings according to those time blocks. So for the morning here, this person is in target range 99% of the time, but in the afternoon, it looks like 83% uh, of the time with 5% of readings below range and 12% of readings above range. So this could be a, a, an option for looking at uh, before and after meal data. Next question. Does the Omnipod upload look any different or have new graphs when added to CGM? So um, yeah, the Omnipod upload is, um, this. the patient we're looking at has uploaded an Omnipod. That's why you think, see the um, Sync Omnipod system button up here. And this still, the wizard here still looks the same. So that, that functionality uh, for uploading an Omnipod using the, the Gluco web uploader is, is the same as the previous version of Gluco. Um, but um, all the graphs and charts I just showed um, those are all, all new and those, these really work for um, any device that might be uploaded to Gluco, whether it's an Omnipod pump or a Medtronic pump or a Tandem or an Animus pump. Um, so all of, the, all of the data from those devices is displayed in the same set of charts and graphs. So the Omnipod, um, Omnipod users will, will receive all of these new charts and graphs. Next question, does the custom range print to PDF? Yep, so um, in the PDF wizard here, we also have a custom range option. So you can choose um, the custom range in the wizard as well, and, and then that will create the corresponding uh, PDF uh, for that time period. Next question, um, why can't I see more of the settings on my Omnipod? Yeah, um, the, the, today Gluco brings in a subset, um, kind of the most important um, pump settings. Um, and we're working actually to change this to um, match what the Diasend product does today, which is to show all of the device settings that we may get from, from a, a device. So um, we're also going to be redesigning the devices page in the next release. And that's going to show you um, settings not only from your Omnipod, but also from, from your CGM as well. So we'll be adding the CGM alarm uh, settings and, and such. So that's also, uh, stay tuned, because that, that is also coming uh, later this year. Are there any plans to allow for historical reporting of device information? For example, can I get a device information? Can I get device information on two different days? So I, I assume that means the device settings, and we do have plans um, to allow you to choose from historical device settings and 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 create reports from each of those um, from from the various historical settings. So yes, there is a plan to do that. Um, Again, it's, it's, it should be coming later, later this year. So um, we had many, many questions, um, but it looks like uh, we're in, nearing the end of our time here. Um, so thank you again for your participation, and um, just to note one more time, you can listen to this webinar again by visiting our website at gluco.com. 
If you have further questions or a question that we didn't get to today, please email us at marketing at gluco.com. We really hope you like what you've seen today and um, stay tuned because we expect to bring more enhancements to the Gluco platform over the summer. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Sam. Thanks.